Section 4 of The Family Kitchen Gardener. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Storm. The Family Kitchen Gardener by Robert Buist. Section 4. Basil. Ocimum Basilicum. Basilic. French. Basilicum, German. There are two sorts of basil, the sweet or large-leaved, Ocimum basilicum, and the small-leaved or bush basil, Ocimum minimum. The qualities of both are the same, but the former is principally used for culinary purposes. They are both annuals. The leaves or tops are the parts gathered for use. The French are very partial to the flavor of this plant. Its leaves enter into the composition of many of their soups and sauces, and, on account of their strong flavour of cloves, are used in all highly seasoned dishes, and even introduced into salads. Culture The seeds should be sown on rich light ground about the middle of April, or it may be grown in a gentle hotbed with early salad, and transplanted to the open ground about the end of the month, in rows one foot apart, and six inches from plant to plant. It makes a very good edging for some of the vegetable quarters. It is a tender plant, and very easily injured by the early frosts of autumn, previous to which they should be pulled up by the roots, tied in small bunches, and hung up in an airy room or loft to dry. They will retain a great portion of their aromatic qualities for winter use. Beans Faceolus vulgaris Haricot, French, Schminkbohne, German. This vegetable is one of the standards of the garden for summer culture. It is an everyday dish for the table. The numerous forms in which it can be served up, the rich buttery flavor of some of the varieties, the crisp juicy character of others, renders at least some of the family palatable to the most fastidious. The following are bush beans or snapshots and their characteristic of excellence is their breaking crisply. If tough, they are unfit for cooking. They are arranged in the rotation of their coming to maturity. Some growers prefer one variety only, while others prefer several sorts. Our remarks are all made with the articles under our culture, and notes taken on the spot. We pay no regard to the hackneyed quotations handed down from one writer to another. Early Mohawk a variety that resists more frost as an early crop than any other. It is an excellent bearer, pods long, beans when ripe, large, oval, dark speckled. Sown 13th May, fit for the table June 16th. Early six weeks. Not so hardy as the former, but equally early. It is a light-colored bean. Early Valentine. The valentine beans are extensively cultivated in this vicinity for the market. They are the sorts that have round pots and continue on the plant a long period for culinary purposes. A great bearer of a salmon color with pink spots. Sown 13th May, fit for the table June 20th. Yellow six weeks. In growth and maturity very similar to the former, though three days later. Late Valentine or Refugee A very excellent variety, very similar in appearance to the early Valentine when green, though a stronger grower. Color dark brown, speckled. Sown 13th May, fit for use June 25th. Black Valentine is a most excellent variety, great bearer and of delicate flavor. Ripens a few days later than the former. Royal White Kidney The best late variety, has long pods, richly flavored, and for family use is indispensable, not only in its green state, but for winter use. As a vegetable it is preferable to any other. Sown 13th May, fit for the table, July 1st. The above sorts may be sown at any time from the 10th of April to the 25th of August. The first sowing in spring is frequently cut off with frost, 
though we have seen the valentine swords all killed, while the mohawk stood uninjured. It should therefore always be adopted for the earliest sowing. A few rows of each sort sown every two weeks will keep a succession for the table from the 1st of June till the middle of October. As this crop does not long occupy the ground, it can frequently be sown between rows of corn, ridges of celery, or drumhead cabbage when they are first planted. Culture. Any good, light, rich soil will grow this bean in perfection. Draw drills with the hoe two and a half inches deep, and from one foot to eighteen inches from row to row. Drop the beans regularly therein about two inches apart. Cover up carefully and expeditiously. Give frequent and deep hoeings to keep open the soil. As soon as the crop is three inches high, draw the earth to their stems. When they begin to show their flower bud, draw a few inches more, which is termed by gardeners earthing up. Seed. Where seed is wished to be saved, the sorts must be grown apart as far as practicable, for they are very susceptible of mixture, if even within fifty yards of each other. Running or pole beans. Haricot aram, French, Stangenbohne, German. Are sorts in great esteem, especially the lima, of which there are two varieties, the white and green. Both are excellent in flavor. The latter has the advantage of size, and the former of producing a more certain and uniform crop. It is a variety most extensively cultivated for the Philadelphia market, covering an extent of over two hundred acres in the immediate vicinity of the city. Culture. They are planted in the last week of April, or first week of May, in hills very similar to Indian corn, and about the same distance apart. In fact, those who can plant corn can plant lima beans. Though strangers to this luscious vegetable often make very curious mistakes in its culture, some drawing drills and sowing them therein, others digging pits and burying the delicate seed, which is impatient of cold or moisture, six or eight inches deep, the results from both of which operations must be nearly a total failure. Some sprout these beans in a hotbed and transplant them into the hills in which they are to grow but very little, if any time, is gained by the trouble. A hill of good rich earth, raised a few inches above the level, and five or six beans put two inches deep therein, will be found the safest and surest. If three grow, it is enough. If not, plant over again. They will grow twenty feet, but rods of twelve feet, placed two feet in the ground at the time the hill is made, will support them. Cold, damp weather frequently destroys the first and even the second planting. Carolina or Siwi bean has all the habits of the lima, though not so large. It is more hardy and produces as profusely, but has not so much of the rich buttery flavor. Dutch case knife is an excellent pole bean, producing a good crop of fine flavor and much earlier for the table than either the lima or Carolina. It can be used either in or without the pod. It is also well adapted for winter use. Cranberry, both the red and white, are much cultivated, though we decidedly prefer the latter. They are of the easiest culture. The cornfield can be used if the garden does not suffice. In fact, we see no reason why every farmer should not have a few beans, even of the lima, on every corn hill. The stalks would support the vines. The produce would bring four dollars per bushel, or even for family use, they would be profitable for an everyday vegetable the whole winter. They are a certain crop, even preferable to the potato, more nutritive, while the latter is becoming a precarious crop and of an indifferent quality. Scarlet runners require to be earlier planted than the lima bean, that they may be well advanced in growth before the hot weather begins, which stunts their growth and prevents their blooming. They must be polled in the same way. The blossoms are red, hence their name. Vigia faba, Ferve de Marais of the French, or Windsor bean of the English, are of trifling value for this climate, compared with the sorts previously described. However, in cool climates, on rich loamy soil, they will, if planted early, make a return for the use of the ground, and prove a variety for the table. The Windsor and early long pod are the best varieties. 
plant them in drills eighteen inches asunder and two inches apart in the row. Beet Beta vulgaris Betterave, French, Rote Rube, German The beet is a native of the sea coast of the south of Europe. It takes its name from the shape of its seed vessel, which, when it swells with the seed, has the form of the letter beta of the Greek alphabet. There are several varieties of the beet in cultivation for culinary purposes, but the most essential sorts are confined to the long blood and turnip rooted. The turnip rooted is the earliest variety, and takes its name from the form of the root. Its quality is decided by the richness of color and closeness of the grain. Long blood is the sort run upon for a general crop to use during winter and spring. It often grows twelve or fourteen inches long and four or five inches thick. Beet is used and prepared for the table in a great variety of ways. It is boiled and sliced and eaten cold with vinegar. It is sliced in salads, both as an eatable and a garnish. It also makes a beautiful and agreeable pickle. The root itself, if eaten alone, affords but little nourishment, though quite indispensable on the table of any pretensions. White beet is esteemed only for its stalks, or the midrib of the leaves, which, being divested of the leafy part, improves the flavor of soups, or if peeled and stewed, it can be eaten like asparagus. Reddish-rooted beet is a new variety of a very dark blood-red color, in shape very similar to the long scarlet reddish, though much larger. White's new blood beet is an improvement in richness of color on the old long beet. London blood beet is a new variety with something more than a name. We are as particular at our table in discussing the qualities of vegetables as others are in the cut or the joint or the peculiar flavors of port or madeira, and we feel assured that this variety of the beet is more delicate in flavor, more brilliant in color, and of as good a form as any other sort. Silver or sea kale beet very much resembles the white beet, though the ribs of the leaves are larger, and, when cooked, has much of the flavor of sea kale. There are several other sorts which come more under the notice of the agriculturist, such as sugar beet, mangelwurzel, etc. Culture Little art is requisite for the culture of this vegetable. One grand essential for an early crop is to dig deep and manure well. So as soon as the soil will admit of working, after the frost is out of the ground. Draw drills, half an inch deep and eighteen inches apart. Drop the seed therein about three inches apart. Cover them lightly and rake finely. If the ground be dry, tread or roll them firmly. Sow a light sprinkling of early reddish seed before raking. They will be fit for pulling before the beets are ready for thinning, which will be in four or five weeks. As soon as the beets have made a few leaves, thin them out to six inches apart, allowing the strongest plants to remain. For a full winter crop, sow the long blood or London beet at any time from the 20th of May till the 20th of June. These will keep better and be more tender for winter use than those sown earlier. On the approach of frost, about the end of October, take up the roots. Cut the leaves off within two inches of the crown and put the roots away in a dry cellar or pack them in barrels with dry sand and keep from severe frost. Plant out early in spring a few of the best roots for seed. Avoid those of a rough or fibrous nature. Borkol Brassica oleracea, variant Chou vert, French, grune coal, German. Borkol, German greens or Scotch kale, is a very delicate vegetable. It is essential to its perfection that it be fully acted upon by frost before it is cut for the kitchen. There are several varieties of it. The parts used are the top or crown of the plant with any of the side sprouts. It boils well and is tender and sweet. The tall and dwarf curly sorts are best adapted for garden culture. Sow the seed in April along with other cabbage, which transplant and treat in the same manner. Broccoli Brassica oleracea, variant. Broccoli, French. Italianische Kohl, German. Broccoli is a variety of the cabbage closely related to the cauliflower, though not so delicate in flavor as that vegetable. 
It is supposed to have come originally from the island of Cyprus, and was cultivated nearly two hundred years ago. In mild climates it is extensively used from November to March, the various early and late sorts coming to maturity in the very middle of winter. In this latitude the culture is confined to Grange's early white and the early purple cape. In their growth, habit and eatable parts they resemble cauliflower, all of them forming roundish heads in the centre of their leaves, composed entirely of a compact collection of numerous buds or tender advancing shoots. Grange's early produces large, fine, white, compact heads of a conical shape. The leaves cover the heads and afford protection in frosty weather. This sort is so much like cauliflower that those who ought to be judges have pronounced it such, though the leaves and flavor are entirely different. For a good crop, sow the seed early in April. Early purple cape also produces large-sized heads of a reddish-brown color, when genuine, very close and compact. It is rather earlier than the former and more hardy. The dwarf Tartarian, white Malta and late white are fine sorts for a mild climate. They will be in use the whole winter. Sow the seeds in June and transplant in July in very rich sandy loam. Culture. The seeds should be sown in April and May in rich soil on an open exposure, where the plants grow much stronger than near trees or fences. Sow the seeds tolerably thick on the surface. If dry, tramp them down and rake in lightly. If drought continues, give the beds a few waterings till the plants appear, which will be in two weeks. To transplant in June or July, when the weather is moist, in rows two feet apart and twenty inches in the row. If the weather is dry when planted, give them water every other day till they begin to grow. Their further culture is to keep them clear of weeds by hoeing and stirring the ground. When they have advanced in growth, draw some earth to their stems, which greatly promotes their luxuriance. They commence heading in October and continue till destroyed by severe frost. The heads should be cut while they remain close and before they assume a seedy-like appearance. In this and more northern latitudes, it is necessary to put these plants into a shed or cellar to have them during winter. Lift them carefully before severe frost and plant them in earth. They will head well when thus treated, but south of Virginia this vegetable may be had in perfection without the least trouble excepting the culture. The seed is all imported from Europe. Brussels sprouts Brassica oleracea variant Chou de Bruxelles, French Sprossenkohl, German This variety of the cabbage is supposed to have originated from Savoy. It is a celebrated vegetable in Europe, especially near Bruxelles and other large towns in Flanders, where from October to April it is an everyday dish on the table of both the rich and the poor. Till recently very little attention has been given to it in this country. Culture. Sow the seed in April and transplant in June or July in the same manner as broccoli. The leaves of the plant are similar to the savoy, crowning a stem about two feet high, from which grow out numerous little cabbages of from one to two inches in diameter. After the sprouts have been frosted, which is necessary to their perfection, they may be gathered. Immerse them in clear water for an hour, and cleanse them from dust and insects. Then boil them quickly for about twenty minutes, using plenty of water. When soft, take them up and drain them well. They are then to be put into a stew pan with cream, or with a little butter thickened with flour, and seasoned to taste, stirring them thoroughly. They may be served up to table with tomato sauce, which greatly heightens their flavor, or seasoned with pepper and salt, and eaten with any sort of meat. As this vegetable is comparatively little known, I have made these observations with a view of encouraging its culture. Plants for seed should have their tops cut off, and the little cabbages allowed to shoot, from which the seed is more perfect. It will keep fresh and sound in a dry place three years, but when grown for that object, should not be near any other sort of cabbage. Burn it. Porterium sanguisorba. Petite pimpernelle, French. Pimpernelle, German. Burn it is a hardy perennial plant. The parts made use of are the young leaves, which are put into salads, and by the French very frequently into soups, 
to which it gives a pleasant and warm taste. Culture. Seed may be sown early in spring in a row where they are to remain. Twenty plants will be sufficient for any family. They are also propagated by dividing the roots, and as the young luxuriant leaves are preferable, the plant should be manured every year and renewed every three or four years. End of section four.